July 18, 1935, tragedy struck Mount Carmel, Illinois. A steam engine powering a thrashing machine exploded on a farm owned by George Marks, injuring six men and killing another. The farm owner's daughter, Georgia Marks, was there to witness the event. I grew up on the farm. I was five years old at the time, and it was a busy, busy day. There were about 24 men there. The owner of the thrashing machine noticed that the water in the boiler was almost out. He added water from a nearby well to the boiler, then the engine exploded. It was as dark as midnight for a few seconds. I will never forget it because all the horses with the wagons ran away. One man was thrown under one of the big steel wheels and right before the explosion, my mother had dinner ready to serve for the 24 men. And I had went to mother and said, mother, I have to go to the toilet. And she said, Georgia. She said, well, just go around on the west side of the house where the men can't see you. And I went around the house. And when I got inside the house, the explosion happened. And the other big steel wheel went through our outside toilet. No one knows for sure what happened, but often explosions would occur in steam engines when water levels ran low. It's just like a bomb going off. The parts will fly um, a long way, you know, several hundred feet. It'll go up in the air, 20, 30 feet possibly. And um, anybody that's around it, uh, if they're hit by a piece of the shrapnel, basically, or a piece of the engine, uh, you know, they, they break bones or crush them. Uh, and then also all that water that's in the boiler instantly turns to steam and just basically scalds and burns anybody that's close by. Explosion would have been heard and felt for miles around Mount Carmel, Illinois. If you let the water get low, in the firebox, um, the top portion of the firebox is called the crown sheet. And that's where the most heat you know, it's right above the fire, the flames are, are heating it up. And if you let the water get low, that crown sheet becomes superheated. And then when you go to add more water, it hits that superheated crown sheet and instantly turns to steam very quickly. And it does it faster than what the engine can handle and it, it creates more steam than what the pop-off valve can release. And at that point, then it'll blow up. My mother pulled all the white sheets off the beds and they wrapped the burnt men into the sheets until the doctors got there. I am so fortunate to be here today. I am very blessed. After the explosion, people from nearby farms hastily came over and helped take care of the injured. Although Chester A. Chapman wasn't as lucky as Georgia, as he was too close to the explosion and was pinned under one of the wheels. Chapman was then transported to Deaconess Hospital in Evansville, Indiana. Later that evening, Chapman died from the injuries sustained from the explosion. He was 16 years old at the time and he was remembered in his obituary as an honest, industrious young man. Though Chapman has mostly been forgotten in time, Georgia and her family will never forget. This has been an F.J. Wright's Feel the History production.